Hello everyone, I hope everybody's doing well. And today I'm going to talk about time-restricted eating. This past week, Dr. Rhonda Patrick came out with a podcast with Dr. Sachin Panda. And he's done a lot of research behind this time-restricted eating, and it was such a good podcast, and that's why I wanted to make this video about that topic specifically. When I watched the podcast and went through it, I ended up taking notes for hours <laughs> about all of the stuff that they went over, and it was just a really, really, really good job that they did breaking down this topic and they're both such brilliant minds but I wanted to kind of condense it and just kind of give you guys a quick overview of what is time restricted eating and what are some of the benefits that can come from it. So time restricted eating, what it is is eating within an 8 to 12 hour time window. Most of the benefits and things that I am going to talk about in this video come from research that was done in that kind of 8 to 10 hour window. So you can go up to kind of that 12 hour mark but just know that the studies themselves were done more in that eight to 10 hour window. And the cool thing about this is it's not changing your diet at all. It's just moving into that eight to 10 hour window. So everything that I'm gonna be talking about has, you don't even need to change your diet. You can eat the exact same foods that you're eating, but just moving it into this window will make a big difference and you'll start to get some of these benefits that I'm gonna be talking about today. So the reason that this works and the reason why it's set up in this kind of eight to 10 hour window is because of our circadian clock. In our brain, we have this thing called the suprachiasmatic nucleus that's in our hypothalamus. And what it does is it controls our circadian clock on kind of this 24 hour-ish window. But in addition to this, we also have these peripheral oscillators. And what that means is it's these other things in our body that when they get influenced, they kind of reset this clock or reset this kind of 24 hour schedule that our body tends to follow on. And where we are in this clock is going to influence how we metabolize things, our hormones, our sleep, and a lot more. So let's think about this in kind of a practical and a health context. So throughout the day, our feelings of healthy kind of change. And Dr. Sachin Panda talks about this on the podcast that he did with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, but in the morning times, feeling healthy is when we feel rested, we feel alert, we feel like we've had a good night's sleep, we're not achy or sore and we're ready for the day. During the day, it's feeling productive, it's feeling alert and it's feeling mentally clear. And at the end of the day, it's feeling calm, it's feeling sleepy and it's feeling like we can go to bed and fall asleep quickly. So that feeling of healthy kind of changes throughout the day and that's kind of partially where this clock comes into play because if we can optimize that feeling of healthy, usually that means that there's all these scientific nitty gritty things happening internally that are producing that positive feeling. So it makes sense that eating within this clock will contribute to those feelings of healthy by affecting some of those kind of internal biomarkers or things happening internally that help produce those feelings. Time restricted eating has been shown to have significant effects on blood glucose as well as a variety of metabolic activities. In turn, it helps affect all of those little internal things which can produce a lot of health benefits. So what they found so far is that it has significant health effects on obesity, lowering fat mass, increasing lean muscle mass. It's been shown to have positive effects on glucose intolerance, on gut dysbiosis, on cardiovascular disease, chronic inflammation, liver diseases, lowering the chance of cancer risk, hypercholesterolemia, sleep disorders, compromised muscle function, as well as things coming out on it having a positive effect on things like IBS and leaky gut and even acid reflux. So it's so cool to me and it just gets me so excited that something that you're not even changing your diet itself, but just the timing can influence so many things. And when you listen to the, to the podcast with Dr. Sachin Panda and with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, breaking down all the mechanisms and why it has these positive effects, it's just, it's mind blowing, it's so, so cool. So if you're more interested in how exactly do these things occur and, and why is it giving these benefits, check out that podcast because they really do a good job breaking it down. And I honestly, I don't even do it justice, but what they talk about and how brilliant they are and when they break it down is phenomenal. So there's the links below to the podcast, check it out. But just know that even if you don't go and watch that, that it does have all of these beneficial effects. So it's something that I highly recommend that you think about trying to implement in your life and making a lifestyle around it. And before I close out, I kind of quickly would just want to talk about why it might be a little bit better than sort of the traditional style of intermittent fasting. And there's kind of two main reasons for that. The first being that in kind of the classic intermittent fasting sort of style and lifestyle, is that you have your bit of a prolonged fast in the morning and then you're feeding windows later in the day. Now it happens and it's been shown that for most people, of course there's exception to every rule, 
later in the day they have a more elevated blood glucose response to food. And as a result, you can have increased inflammation and then you might not get some of those benefits that I just mentioned that time-restricted eating can give you. And the second being that our gut repairs itself at night. So if we're eating within that kind of two to three to even four hour time window before we go to bed, it might not give our gut the chance to properly heal itself at night. As a result, this can kind of mess with that clock that I've been talking about and affect some of our metabolism that happens the following day. And thus, in turn, maybe not giving as much of the benefit that comes along with the time-restricted eating. It's also been shown that the more that we learn about gut microbiome, that a lot happens when we're asleep but it can be affected if it's going through digestion. So if we're eating really close to kind of nighttime and that feeding window for our intermittent fasting happens close to when we go to sleep, then we might not let the little bacteria in the gut do its thing as well and kind of replenish itself to prepare for the next day. And that's kind of a topic for another day, but there's so many health factors and implications of having a healthy gut microbiome and making sure that it has the ability to replenish itself and have a variety of species inside of our gut. This was a really quick overview, so if you want more information or if you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to comment or to contact me or check out the podcast for Dr. Rhonda Patrick and Dr. Sachin Panda. It's phenomenal. It's pretty dense, but it's really, really good. Um, the link is below. And if you're thinking of starting a time-restricted eating regime, I highly recommend that you go to Dr. Sachin Panda's website, mycircadianclock.org. Again, the link is below. And there you'll learn a lot more about time-restricted eating, as well as you can become a part of his study and kind of get feedback and it helps guide you through it a little bit better. If you like this video and you want more of these kind of brief reviews and news on practical health science, Please like and subscribe to support. See ya.